so in this video guys we're going to talk about uh the last build that we haven't really covered yet which is uh lightning sorcerer so as usual we start off with the skills doing something a bit different this time um than my usual builds something i haven't tried before but i'm finding to be a lot of fun is i am specking into arc lash as my primary damage dealer so i start off by putting four to five points into arc lash getting flickering arc lash for the gain the movement speed increase per enemy hit up to 18 percent movement speed because i'm wearing a pair of boots um i think they're called isus heirlooms or isus ferocity or something like that that increase my crit chance by, by 30 percent of my movement speed increase so movement speed increase equals higher crit chance which is good for this build uh coming on down here to core skills we just grab one point into charged bolts and enhanced charge bolts and destructive charge bolts so we diminish the damage dealt to us by 25 percent for three seconds makes us extra tanky in nightmare dungeons where we can kind of soak up some more damage and avoid dying which is nice always so and of course coming down here to defensive skills we're going to take all of the defensive skills that includes Frost Nova down to Mystical Frost Nova for vulnerability, Ice Shield just one point in for extra tankiness, two out of three points in a glass cannon because I utilize my points elsewhere, Teleport into Mystical Teleport for four seconds after teleporting, Crackling Energy hits two additional enemies, which means bigger cooldown reductions, um, Flame Shield up into Shimmering Flame Shield for the heal. And of course, one out of three points into elemental attunement. So, moving on down here to conjuration skills, we've got four out of five points into lightning spear. That's going to get us down here to invoke lightning spear, which stuns enemies for almost three seconds when critically striking. These things have a high critical strike chance, and lucky hit chance is decent on them, so they're going to be firing off a lot and doing a lot of damage and critting a lot, meaning um, enemies are going to be stunned, so they're not going to be hitting you, which is nice. 3 out of 3 points in Conjuration Mastery, you deal 3% increased damage for each active Conjuration. Um, when I pop Unstable Currents and a lot of Lightning Spears are flying out, it's going to increase my damage exponentially. So, 1 out of 3 points into Align the Elements, and 1 out of 3 points into Mana Shield, 3 out of 3 points into Protection for Barrier Upkeep time. Uh, moving down here to Mastery Skills, we get... 8 out of 5 points into Ball Lightning, so we're not going to be utilizing Ball Lightning as a go-to skill, but it will be proccing off of our Unstable Currents ultimate, and that will be sending out lots of Ball Lightnings. Plus, we're using it as an enchantment, so Lucky Hit, Chance, Critical Strikes have a 25% chance to spawn a Static Ball Lightning. And we mod it into Wizard's Ball Lightning, that way we get Crackling Energy, it's our main source of Crackling Energy. Uh, 1 out of 3 points into Static Discharge, and 3 out of 3 points into Shocking Impact here, and I don't worry too much about this, although I might switch out a point for that and put it into Invigorating Conduit just to get some mana regen back. Um, unstable Currents all the way down to Supreme Unstable Currents, which means Crackling Energy continually pulses and consumes no charges very nice one out of three points into cursing currents uh coursing currents say that 10 times fast uh three out of three points here into conduction critical strikes increase my movement speed by nine percent also more movement speed increase which means more critical hit chance um three out of three points into electrocution two out of three points into convulsions so that is going to do it for me and of course going to be taking the overflowing energy key passive here uh which is going to create a lot of cooldown reduction for me so coming on over to the paragon board i've built a simple setup here mate it is strictly up the root sword here of the elementalist rare node getting this first glyph just going to be my mastery adept glyph for every fight of intelligence, mastery skills gain 7.5% increased damage. That's going to just make my damage skyrocket, bring in my mastery skills, and have them have a 20% increased area radius. I like to get both passives on the side here. 
um, being erudite and elemental balance come up here to this board which is going to be the static surge board static surge stunning close enemies restores 10 mana so it's going to be a huge mana regen buff it's got a lot of damage to stun enemies 30 percent here um, if i kind of go up the board here to the left side you get incapacitate put another glyph in for control um dealing 10 times increased damage to slower chill enemies instead 20 times 20% increased damage to stunned or frozen enemies. So I'm going to be freezing with Frost Nova and stunning a lot with my um, lightning skills. So that's good. And then go down the right side here. After flipping the board twice, that is, go down the right side here and pop on over into this Ceaseless Conduit uh, board, which is going to be really, really, really good. But I have to get some more Paragon points to get to it. Uh, but definitely it all buffs my electricity damage, or I mean, I should say my lightning damage, not my electricity damage. This isn't Thomas Edison's, um, first showcasing of the light bulb, so I don't know why I said that, but, uh, yeah, that's about it. As far as the gear is concerned, I am doing lucky hit chance increase on my helm. Of course, rhyming of the infinite from my chest piece, which means I suck all the enemies into a close quarters tight combat situation and stun them for 2.1 seconds. I just got these fists of fate gloves. Um, lots of lucky hit modifiers here. And definitely an ability or a chance to increase my damage by up to 300%. Um, but that means anywhere between 1 to 300%. So sometimes the damage will be low, sometimes it'll be high, really high. Uh, in that case, I'm trying it out and running the build with the gloves to see what kind of crits I can hit. Um, Pants of the Protector, I happen to roll a really good um, stat roll of 4,881 damage absorption for 10 seconds on these barrier pants. So, of course, Isu's Heirloom, the boots I talked about earlier. Your critical strike chance is increased by 24% of your movement speed bonus. So the higher my movement speed bonus, which is skyrocketed through a number of different skills I showed you earlier, the higher my critical strike chance. So that's good. I've modded my wand to be um, the gravitational wizard's touch. So ball lightning orbits around me now, and its damage is increased by 11%, which is a pretty good roll for this gear. Um, ignore that I shards imprint. And critical strike chance against injured enemies with a bunch of lightning damage on that ring. And using a cooldown restores 22 mana. And then of course your deal 48% more damage to immobilize stunned or frozen enemies. So now that you've kind of gotten a feel for what the gear and the abilities and the skills and the paragon board look like. Um, we're going to go ahead and try and run a nightmare dungeon and see what we can do. All right, guys, so we are just getting into this Nightmare Dungeon now here. We're going to do a little bit of the showcase on the skills and break down how they're utilized and in what order to do so. That way, you know, you're getting the best out of your build here. Um, first off, as you can see, I just teleport directly into the enemies and I cast Unstable Currents because I'm going to be doing a lot of Arc Lash. Arc Lash is going to be proccing Unstable Currents every time I hit the button so as you can see things pretty much just die right away uh, it's pretty amazing to watch actually but yeah see we keep our shields up in case that happens where we need to oh shit button it and um, get a shield going real quick like there it is again that guy's charging my ass off see if we can't kill him real quick and new mob so animus carrier here Arc Lash, Arc Lash, Arc Lash, Arc Lash. Pop a shield. Do some more Arc Lashing. Wait till some of our cooldowns are reduced. And, you know, continue to do the damage. So. Teleport over here. What a nuisance. Uh, pop flame shield makes you run a little bit faster makes your kill elites a little bit better another animus carrier pop in frost nova arc lash wait till he wakes up pop a shield 
No, you're good. You're good to go and take some damage. Except for, you know, you gotta oh shit your potion button once in a while. Um, electricity damage seems to, or lightning damage seems to do quite a bit to me. So I gotta be very careful about how I go into this fight here. Yeah, so Arc Flash everything down pretty much until I can collect Crackly Energies. The Crackly Energies are going to make it so I get um, mana back, movement speed increase, the whole shebang, basically. The most difficult part here is trying to get down these elites with Arc Flash can take for freaking ever. So it's nice to have some trash mobs over here that you can kind of tap into, do a Frost Nova. And uh, pop your unstable currents when you have it, and watch the health bar go down. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna make sure I keep that potion button unlock. Because, you know, who knows when I'm going to need to pop three or four of those just not to die on this Nightmare Dungeon. I'm um, still relatively new to this lightning build, so I don't really have everything fine-tuned the way that it needs to be in order for it to run the most efficiently, as you can tell. But, um, I do have the basis for it and, you know, a decent amount of the glyphs for the Paragon board in the right area, um... Mainly now what is needed is stat adjustment and re-rolling my gear so that I'm getting different stats that help fine-tune this build a little bit better, which would be increasing attack speed and um, critical hit chance. So, As you can see though, Arc Lash does a lot of damage for a basic skill. It's pretty awesome because it helps you uh, clear out these trash mobs pretty quickly, actually. And... Uh, it's nice because you can just kind of run in here and take charge and I mean I'm just mowing this guy down real quick here I'm trying not to die by his fire skills because that would suck right over here right there oh sweet the first legendary piece of gear drop oh fuck it it'll do Try and make sure we don't die. Oh, another piece of legendary gear. Rewarding us for our hard work. Focus. Nice, nice. Um, I mean, as you can tell, this build is really fun to play. Um, it's very easy to play. You know, it mows through things pretty quickly. And it definitely has a lot of versatility to it. I mean as far as like the types of damage you're dealing are concerned you got stun effects you got vulnerable effects you've got critical hit chance to the roof um you've got crackling energy going you've got just paralyzing enemies to the point of no return and since our clash has such a fast attack speed time you can really pop off some unstable current um procs really 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 well like that that guy was just decimated in a matter of seconds, so. Bring him in, teleport, and, you know, just mow him down. Kind of the same old, same old thing. But this gives you a general idea of, you know, what the build's like, how fun it could be, and, um, you know, how to utilize it to its fullest extent, making sure that you know you're doing things the right way and you're having fun while you're doing it so I think we'll uh, finish up here by getting down this guy casting um, an absurd amount of volcano crap at me and that's it, so we'll go deposit this 
Animus into the Animus Urn. Trying to see how the build does against bosses a little bit. I like having to teleport, I think is my second achievement. So yeah, I get to teleport around quite a bit. Dark Flash can do some decent damage if I just try and stay out of the AoE. And that's all she wrote, folks. Couldn't quite cut it that time. But you get the gist of it. You get the idea, which is what's important. I feel like not my survival rate by any means, but if I do say so myself, um, it's a lot of fun to play. Definitely, you know, has the potential to be even better once you get your attack speed and critical hit chance up. And, you know, can tear through elites pretty quickly, moderately quickly. I mean, I'm not going to say it's as quickly as, like, my Blizzard build did, but it's definitely, you know, up there. So, yeah, I think you guys have had enough of watching me die now. If you have any questions, leave comment in the video section and like comment or subscribe if you guys want to see more videos on diablo 4 sorcerers with the upcoming patch there's going to be a lot of changes on may 8th so or i should say august 8th yeah august 8th is when the uh, patch comes out that's going to have a bunch of different buffs for the sorcerer and a bunch of different buffs to different playstyles and builds so be on the lookout for more videos then thanks guys catch you later